Good evening, I'm David Gould, Chair of PCDC's Board of Directors, and on behalf of the Board, I welcome and thank you for joining us at this year's virtual gala. Together, we recognize and celebrate PCDC's clients, partners, and staff who've worked tirelessly in this pandemic year to promote access to high quality primary care for all. Looking at who's joined us tonight, I recognize many old friends of PCDC and see many new names from Florida to Tennessee to California and here in New York. Welcome all. Having been a champion and supporter of PCDC since its inception, I've witnessed its growth from financing a few fledgling community health centers in New York City to become a nationally recognized organization offering capital, technical expertise, and advocacy in 40 states and territories. During this devastating pandemic, the need for greater and more equitable access to primary care and other vital health and social services has never been greater. And we know that the primary care landscape is bleakest in those underserved and under-resourced communities hardest hit by COVID-19. Clearly the need for PCDC's programs, services, and expertise has also never been greater. So what does PCDC do? Like the superstars in baseball or football, PCDC is a triple threat. Capital financing to create more primary care resources, technical expertise to improve the quality and efficiency of the care they provide, and analytic capacity to inform our advocacy for more supportive public and payer policies. Collectively, these resources have made a real difference. To the many donors and sponsors who've already made a donation to PCDC, I thank you. I ask everyone who has not yet donated to please do so either through the chat function on this Zoom call or at PCDC's website. And if you've already given and could do even more, please step up and increase your gift. On behalf of PCDC's Board of Directors, I extend a heartfelt thank you to PCDC's clients and partners, and most especially to Louise Cohen and all of our dedicated and talented staff. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Welcome everyone. I'm Louise Cohen, and I have the honor of serving as PCDC's uh, Chief Executive Officer. Thank you for joining us this evening at PCDC's first virtual gala. We're sorry not to see you in person and we look forward to next year when we hope we will be able to be together again. I hope you have the drink of your choice in your hand and we look forward to sharing more about PCDC and our wonderful partners over the course of this next uh, half an hour, 45 minutes. I'd like to start by thanking PCDC's board chair, David Gould, and the entire board of directors for your leadership, commitment, and support. And specifically, I wanna thank David Gould, Don Ashkenaz and Diana Mason for their extraordinary support for this year's event. This year has been challenging to say the least. We have had to rise to meet the challenge of the pandemic. We have had to rise to meet the challenge of racial justice. And we have had to rise to meet the challenge of health equity. PCDC was founded three decades ago to address access to primary care in low-income communities of color Health inequity grounded in a long history of redlining, deliberate disinvestment, and racism. And we have risen to meet that challenge by providing more than $1.3 billion of investment into disinvested communities, helped create over 15,000 jobs, helped over 800 practices become recognized as patient-centered medical homes, and with partners that serve more than 50 million people across the country in almost every state. And yet, there is more to be done. In case any of us were not paying attention, COVID-19 has stripped away all pretense that there is equal access to care or a level playing field. No, it is crystal clear that the deficit in primary care in low-income communities of color began long before this pandemic. And over many years, the lack of access and investment in primary care and in prevention have left many communities poorer, sicker, and especially vulnerable in this pandemic. Because of COVID-19, many primary care providers have closed their doors or scaled back their hours, and many have not yet returned to pre-COVID levels. And while people are returning to their primary care providers across the country, the effect of having foregone essential primary care services such as vaccinations managing chronic conditions like asthma and diabetes and heart disease, and screening and treatment for diabetes and cancer, 
and substance use will be with us for a long time to come. It is said that in every crisis there is an opportunity. The opportunity here is to meet our obligation to act now, both with intention and with purpose to address the roots of our public health crisis, both the pandemic and the primary care crisis that already existed. Thanks to PCDC's supporters and partners, many of you who are watching in this pandemic and over the last 27 years, we have been able to invest in communities in New York City, across the state and across the country. Since the pandemic began, PCDC has provided critical loan capital, financial relief, technical assistance and actionable insights to our clients and partners. Last year alone, PCDC deployed over $100 million in capital and tax credits. We aid practices across the country to transform and to become financially sustainable. With PCDC's programs and the services that you help make possible, these providers are able to keep their doors open, retain staff, and see patients safely. And with our new $10 million capital and technical assistance COVID-19 fund, we hope to support even more practices to become stronger and more financially stable during this difficult time. These activities and more form the core of PCDC's approach to primary care and health equity. We won't stop until primary care is available and accessible in every community. I ask for your continued support and your partnership to join PCDC to strengthen primary care, enhance services, and address disparities in healthcare access and outcomes. Thank you for joining us today, and special thanks to PCDC's clients and partners. Your work inspires all of us here at PCDC. And thank you to my dedicated PCDC staff who truly are the best in the business. Hello, my name is Helen Arteaga. I'm a proud board member of this amazing organization. Thank you so much for joining our event. Now more than ever, we see primary care as an important essential part of our lives. And PCDC's mission to transform, invest, and advocate for low-income communities that need this access to health care is more alive today than ever. Your support and investment makes our work get a bigger impact and nationwide. That's why today I'm so thankful to be part of this board, and I'm thankful to you for giving your time and your donation to us. Thank you again, and enjoy the rest of the event. On behalf of the New York Community Trust, congratulations on your 2020 virtual gala. In 1993, a trust grant helped PCDC get off the ground. It was a smart investment. Over time, we've helped PCDC bring patient-centered medical homes to New York, get providers to adapt to value-based care, and now help them return to productivity in the wake of the COVID-19 shutdowns. The agency remains an anchor for New York's healthcare providers. The Trust is proud to be a supporter of its work as we all aspire to a more healthy and equitable New York. PCDC wouldn't be here today without our partners and their extraordinary commitment to making their communities healthier and more equitable. Let's hear about their work directly from the people putting their hearts and hands on the line. Good day, I'm uh, Dean Germano. I'm the CEO at Shasta Community Health Center. Uh, we're based here in Redding, California, which is in Shasta County, about two hours north of Sacramento in far northern California, a couple hours from the Oregon border. So we're in a rural part of our state of California. Uh, the Community Health Center, we, we serve 93% uh, of our patients live below federal poverty. So our focus is really on uh, low-income special need populations. You know, we have 160,000 uh, people in our county and we serve about a quarter of that population through our health center. Hi, I'm Christine Rooney. I'm a family medicine physician and the chief medical officer of My Care Family. I work at Greater Lawrence Family Health Center, which is located in Lawrence, Massachusetts, which is in the northern part of Massachusetts, almost at the New Hampshire border. Our population really is a primarily underserved population of Latino, where 72% of our population is Latino. And we have uh, about 60,000 patients at Greater Lawrence Family Health Center. My Care Family has 37,000 patients within this area and half of which are really kids. So we take care of a lot of people with various backgrounds. My name is Wendy Stark, and I'm the executive director of Callan Lord Community Health Center. 
We primarily serve LGBTQ people in the greater New York City metropolitan area with health center locations in Manhattan, the Bronx, and Brooklyn. Cal and Lord was founded to address health inequities for LGBTQ people. We were founded in 1969, and our mission today is still the same, to try to achieve health equity for LGBTQ populations, for people living with HIV, and for all systemically underserved people in the greater New York City metropolitan area. Our whole reason for existence is health equity and justice. I am Dr. Kemi Ali. I'm the Chief Executive Officer here at Henry J. Austin Health Center, located in Trenton, New Jersey, the capital city of New Jersey. Um, we serve approximately 30,000 active individuals who generate about 70,000 visits a year. The mission of Henry J. Austin is really to provide whole person health care looking at the individual holistically, mind and body, so providing both primary care as well as behavioral health care services. Our purpose is to treat every individual who walks through our doors, regardless of their status, regardless of their economic, social background, regardless of race, ethnicity, or gender. At the heart of our partner's work is a long-standing commitment to addressing health inequities. The breadth of the work undertaken by these organizations to serve their communities with a deep understanding of their unique needs and challenges is impressive and humbling. Health inequities are very real in our community. Uh, we are a community that has a very high ACEs score, uh, adverse child experiences. In fact, 40% of our population reports for a, a score of four or more. Uh, when you consider, if you, if you study the, the, the uh, area of ACEs, the state of California, the average is 17% of the population is a score of four or more. So we're more than double what the state's average is. So health inequities really, really impact how people are able to take care of themselves. And it really focuses on priorities. If you're lacking housing, you're not going to make an extra effort to take your cholesterol medicine every day, right? So what we need to do is really look at the whole person. And one of the ideas is there's layers of health care. Um, there's face-to-face -face care, but there's also the care that people need to be able to get to medical care and get the information from that medical care to take care of themselves well in the community. And so understanding how we can help patients navigate to and from these different layers of healthcare is really important. Addressing health inequities is our whole reason for existence. We were founded to create health equity and justice for LGBTQ communities and people living with HIV and all people who have been systemically underserved by our mainstream medical systems. We do that by providing quality, sensitive healthcare free of judgment and regardless of ability to pay for anyone who seeks our services. We also provide education, research, and advocacy to try to change the way our healthcare systems writ large care for and understand and are competently treating LGBTQ communities. Addressing health inequities is really important to Henry J. Austin. I believe we are all on this planet, on, on this earth, uh, and we have a purpose, each and every one of us. I believe Henry J. Austin's purpose is to serve those that often go unserved. And in that, making sure that the individuals who come through our doors have an equitable playing field, have equity in the services they receive. I believe each and every one of us as a human being has a right to receive the same kind of health care, the same quality in health care. And because we are a federally qualified health center, our patients should receive no less than anyone else walking into the doors of any other health care institution. We believe that's part of our purpose. We believe that's part of our mission. And in doing so, making sure that we 
have equity in all that we do. COVID-19 has had devastating impacts on already underserved communities. Since March, our partners have been on the front lines of community care and responded quickly to the needs of their patients to provide both ongoing access to primary care and COVID-19 testing and treatment. COVID-19, like almost, well, all of the world, but in America has changed our lives in many ways. Um, it's been a huge stressor in our community for us on the primary care side, we, we went to great lengths to, to make sure that access wasn't compromised. By the same token, how do we protect our staff uh, and our patients, you know, uh, the best we could. We, we made a lot of investments in things like screening technology and, and workflow adjustments. And um, we did not have point of care testing um, which we've just received as of last week, finally. And that's a game changer for us because now we can uh, do some things we couldn't do before. We, uh, we did a lot of virtual care. Uh, at the height of the first wave, we were at almost 45% of our visits were, were done virtually. Uh, a lot of that was by phone, not so much by video, uh, probably three quarters by phone, one quarter by video. And, and what that demonstrated to us, we talked about inequalities, is that in a rural area like ours, in a low income area like ours, um, the access to uh, high speed internet is, is, is not great in many places in our county. The cost of that is, can be prohibitive to a lot of our families and individuals. And hence, and the technology being used by a lot of our patients is, is probably not the most current either. The COVID-19 pandemic has had devastating implications and effects on our communities. Not only have our communities been disproportionately impacted by the virus itself and by the health outcomes and morbidity and mortality of that virus, but also by increasing economic insecurities, by increasing housing and food insecurities. And it's this holistic group of things that really creates health and wellness. We need to keep our doors open. We need to keep our services active and we need to even do more for our communities based on what's going on with the pandemic and what will happen in our communities for years to come, that devastating impact. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, when we were all first quarantining, we started making calls. We knew that our revenues would start to decline very rapidly. And in fact, they did. And one of our first calls was to PCDC to see if they could provide any assistance or relief on our loans. And in fact, they, they responded in the affirmative very promptly and said, absolutely, we can give you some debt relief. We can help you through this situation. Let us know how else we can help. And so once again, we owe PCDC a huge debt of gratitude, not only for the fiscal relief that that provided, but the emotional relief at a time when we needed to rally our staff, ourselves, to respond to the virus, to take care of our patients. Having that debt service relief in that moment was truly invaluable. So thank you again, PCDC. PCDC's strong and vibrant board of directors has enabled PCDC to be flexible and responsive to the changing primary care movement. I am honored to introduce you to a few of our board members tonight. Hi, I'm George Petit, the President and CEO of Coordinated Behavioral Care, and I am a member of the PCDC board because I am a strong believer in the role that primary care has in providing the necessary services in the community for individuals that need physical health services. Carol Raphael, and I'm a senior advisor at Manat Health, and I am the vice chair of the PCDC board. I am a member of the PCDC board because I believe that primary care is truly the center of our healthcare universe. It's often the front door by which people enter the system. It offers comprehensive care and support and integrates behavioral health, specialty services, and social services. And as we try to reshape the healthcare system so that people can avoid unnecessary acute care stays and emergency room visits, I believe that primary care is going to be a pivotal part of that transformation. 
My name is Sarah Gelfand. I work at Fidelity Charitable and I am a PCDC board member. I am a member of the PCDC board because I believe so much in the work this organization does. Um, fundamentally, I believe in the importance of primary care and the need for primary care to be accessible to families and individuals wherever they are. And I know that access to responsible and responsive financing is key to helping primary care clinics you know, sustain and thrive everywhere. And I also know that the capacity building work that primary, the Primary Care Development Corporation does makes all those organizations stronger. And finally, the commitment to policy and lifting all of the needs of, of our healthcare sector is key. And so it's the mutually reinforcing work of all of these parts of our program that I, of this organization that I think will uh, really move the needle in, in our health for our population. And that's why I'm proud to be a board member. I am a member of the PCDC board because I know that to achieve health equity, we need social equity. PCDC is on the front lines of helping provide access and comprehensively address the health needs of vulnerable and low-income communities. And that is the reason I'm involved with PCDC. Hi, my name is Yvette Teofan, and I'm a member of the PCDC board of directors. I'm a member of the PCDC board because I know from personal experience that one of the most important factors in your health is having a doctor who knows you as a person, whose practice sees you on a regular basis, someone that you can think of as your doctor. It's primary care development. This is an organization focused on exactly the work we do, in the care we provide is in doing primary care. Um, we go to organizations and we go to communities that no one else has the, the fortitude or the ability to provide critical services. We always look to our partners for their guidance and ask, what are your biggest needs and concerns? How can we help? Here's what they've said to us. PCDC really understands that uh, new market projects are technically very difficult. Um, you know, this was our second one, so we had some understanding of what, what that looks like. And, uh, but it makes a world of difference when you're working with people who know, A, what they're doing, and B, what you're doing. <laughs> so uh, so we, you know, we had some difficult conversations about some goals, some timelines, those kinds of things. But uh, it really, the, the team was excellent to work with, good communicators. Um, you know, I met them several times at various meetings when we could meet. Communication is absolutely essential, and I have to say, you guys were great. It really was a, a great team effort. I really feel it, it, wor it worked out much cleaner than our first project. And maybe some of that was experience on our part, but I think a big part of that was the knowledge base and the understanding that PCDC brought uh, to the project for us. In working with PCDC, we have had the opportunity to think about consultation that's really grounded in the primary care experience. For us working in rural areas, we know that primary care is really one of the sole service sites for just about any service, not only health care. And when we work with PCDC, we know that the support, the technical assistance that we receive is really framed towards that primary care lens, which is so important for us, our stakeholders and our partners in rural areas areas across the country. Hi, my name is David Woodlock and I'm the CEO at the Institute for Community Living or ICL as we call it. I'd like to share a story with you today, one of uh, dreams. A number of years ago we were running a mental health clinic in a very troubled part of, uh, of New York City uh, in the East New York uh, Brownsville area. Uh, it was a well-attended clinic uh, with a lot of people with a lot of troubles. Uh, our staff, incredibly dedicated group, worked very, very hard to try and help people get better. And I have to say, but it was enormously frustrating for everybody because the people that were coming to us for their mental health care had lots and lots of complicated needs, most of them actually in the health care arena. So our people were spending a lot of time trying to figure out who the primary care docs were, how to get people uh, access to what we're now calling the social determinants of health. Uh, 
while our staff were frustrated, their clients were frustrated, even though their mental health needs were being met, their lives really weren't improving very much. We owned the building that that clinic was in. It wasn't a very nice building in truth. So we set out to try and find a way to take better care of people. And with PCDC's help, we were able to do that. Our dream today has turned into a 43,000 square foot integrated health hub in East New York. We took a risk and frankly threw the dice a little bit being a behavioral health agency reaching out to PCDC uh, really as a, uh, as a shot in the dark. Uh, a behavioral health a agency asking a primary care development uh, entity to, to help us build that dream. Uh, and today, I couldn't be more happy to say that uh, about 5,000 people a year uh, get care at our East New York Health Hub. It's been a dream of ICLs that's been fulfilled. And I'm very happy to say that those 5,000 people today are living healthier, happier lives because of the support we receive from PCDC. Talon Lord was founded in 1969 we were literally two physicians working out of an apartment in the East Village. We were outside of the healthcare system and we were certainly not a licensed healthcare entity. We remained a sort of alternative healthcare entity throughout the 70s and into the 80s and even into the 90s. People were coming to us for full-fledged primary care, but as a non-licensed healthcare entity with a, with a space that was not code compliant and not able to be licensed, we could not move forward with becoming a primary care provider without assistance. And PCDC provided that assistance. In 1994, we applied for a, a loan program under the primary care initiative, and we were granted one of these loans. And that enabled us to purchase a facility in 1996 that then opened in 1998 and allowed us to become a licensed healthcare facility and provide all the services our community so desperately needed from us. We could not have done this without PCDC as both our lender and an organization that was providing us with a lot of guidance, with a lot of technical assistance and a lot of capacity building services to learn how to become a licensed regulated healthcare facility from the grassroots beginning that we had. So working with PCDC, we wanted to redesign our building, and, and I call it a sort of rebirth of Henry J. Austin. And in that redesign, we wanted to be sure that our mission was the center of what we do, even as we designed our building. And one of the things that was really important to me as we provide integrated whole person holistic care is really looking at our design through a trauma-informed lens. And what that means is we paint, as we color, as we position tables and chairs and waiting rooms is really important in creating trauma-informed spaces or safe spaces for our patients, for our families, for those that walk through our doors. And I thought one day, well, I'll reach out to PCDC as they are supporting us in our design efforts. And lo and behold, they did have an expert on staff who really helped us think through how we create safe, trauma-informed spaces for our patients. And whether that was the color, whether that was the positioning of the waiting room chairs, it was the flow, it was the lights, it was really inspiring to understand that we can create spaces that are informed and safe as we redesign our building. So when I started working at Altura, um, they had recently applied for PCMH and they did not receive recognition. Um, one of the first recommendations I made is that we use PCDC as I had heard of them before. Um, and quickly after we worked with PCDC, um, we attested for a patient-centered medical home, and shortly after that, we received um, accreditation. Um, that really gave us the confidence that we were looking for to, to navigate into the future of healthcare, and it really helped us 
um, prepare ourselves for um, actually having the right structure to become a patient-centered medical home. As CEO, I am always honored when primary care providers and organizations choose to partner with us time and time again. PCDC's experience and expertise becomes evident when looking at the dedication of our staff to delivering the highest quality services. I sit on the loan committee for PCDC and I have the opportunity to look at the way the team that underwrites and evaluates the clinics that PCDC supports, thinks about the role they play as a lender. And I, I can't think of a more compassionate, uh, partnering, responsible, um, available lender than PCDC. And the way that this organization cares for and thinks about the financial support it provides to clinics is really unrivaled. I'm also a big and strong proponent as a public sector psychiatrist in the role that public sector behavioral health and primary care need to work together and collaboratively on improving access to and, and delivery of services for individuals that need either physical health or behavioral health services. And PCDC is leading the way in that, and I am very proud to be a board member. And in addition to uh, improving the, the, the quality and access of direct service in uh, low income and uh, communities and communities of color, what PCDC also does is amplify, amplify their needs uh, with its policy and advocacy work. And that's tremendously important. It has, it's able to t take what's happening on the ground, um, package it in a way, inform it with data, aggregate it, and really make it louder uh, to create some noise in the sort of halls of power. You know, PCDC's history and reputation have given it a bully pulpit where it's able to use that to um, provide additional access. I do most of my work with PCDC on the capital investment side. And what makes it worthwhile for clients to work with us as opposed to, for instance, another bank or a different CDFI is we really know the sector. And like the relationship that I was talking about between the doctor and the patient, we care about the practice as a whole and not just as a loan. So if the practice ever gets into trouble, either in the way that they are conducting their practice, our quality improvement team can help them out. But if they get in trouble from a financial perspective, PCDC's staff, who is excellent, work really hard with them side by side, not just to save the loan, but to save the practice. Um, and that's a real value add. The primary beneficiary of PCDC are, are federally qualified health centers, community health centers. And typically, in urban areas, that means most of all uninsured patients, Medicaid patients, patients with no other place to go. In our setting, we're in remote rural communities where there's no other health care at all, and we take care of everyone in the community. Medicare, commercially insured, uninsured, everybody in between. And the only reason that these people have care locally is because we can be there and the one best reason we can be there is we have the support of PCDC on every side, financing, advocacy, and consulting services. PCDC is, uh, is, is moved, I think, has moved beyond the new markets piece. They really, in our state, I'm seeing their presence in the DNA of conversations at the California Primary Care Association, for example. I know they're doing work on ACEs that we talked about earlier, for example, getting information out. I think they have, um, they're trying to extend, and I appreciate sort of the, the, the scope of what they do in New York. They're trying to bring some of that knowledge base to California and spots that we need it. At CHU, we've been really impressed with PCDC's strategy related to integrated behavioral health. We think about integrated behavioral health truly as a pathway to health equity when we think about access to services, uh, stigma reduction, and really supporting people in their whole lives related to their care experience. So we've been very thankful that PCDC understands integrated behavioral health in a way that really presents a lot of depth and meaning to the providers that we work with. I think in general, when we think about health, equity, we often think about the services that are provided, and that's very important. But I wanted us to often to also think about 
the way in which we provide those services. And that's really where PCDC's partnership has been instrumental in helping us think through that. Um, I think all too often we provide services, and I believe um, that federally qualified health centers provide uh, some of the best quality services in our country. But far too often, the way in which we provide those services, the buildings through which we provide those services, don't mirror the superior services that are provided within. And I wanted to be sure that as we provide quality services, that we do so with a look to our physical spaces that provide respect and dignity and thoughtfulness to those that come into that space. And in partnering with PCDC, that has allowed us to do that. PCDC has really gave us the confidence that we need um, when it comes to preparing for NCQA audit. So we, we really feel that if NCQA showed up at our doors tomorrow, we would be ready for that audit. They didn't just show us the answers. They taught us the way of what it really means to live by PCMH, by the PCMH standards. And so um, that has also trickled down into the other departments um, as we make those changes. Um, anybody can say that they are certified with PCMH, but, our, but what makes PCDC a little bit different is they help you navigate and give you ideas on how to really implement those and how to um, make those changes within the organization that are gonna be um, there the next year and the next year. One of the wonderful things about having a fiscal and thought partner in PCDC is also that they are an advocacy partner. PCDC plays such an important role statewide and nationally in the advocacy around primary care as the foundational basis for how our healthcare system should be addressing health inequities. They are always advocating for public health initiatives and for ways to keep our communities healthy and to really try to untangle the systemic racism, the systemic homophobia, the systemic transphobia that is so ingrained in our healthcare systems. And for that partnership, we are deeply grateful. Thank you again for joining us to honor PCDC's partners and staff. I ask for your continuing support, your contributions, and your partnership to join PCDC to strengthen primary care, enhance services, and achieve health equity.